Oh, welcome back to the channel. It's Office Boy Builder here. So today we are going to be building the walls that run along here. One on this side and one on this side. These are stud walls that are going to frame out the kind of hallway space. Let me flip it around and I'll show you. These are going to be the stud walls that come along here and frame out this hallway space. This is a temporary bit that I've put in, just so I've got somewhere safe to stand. There'll actually be a staircase like this one running up through here. And that's why in the last video I had to raise this up. If you haven't seen that, I'll post a link to that up here of the, uh, the process that we went through. Still a little bit more to finish off here, tidying this up. Not crucial or essential at this juncture. What I want to do is I want to start getting some of these walls up so I can run the electrical cabling through the stud work and um, yeah, go, go about it that way. So what I'm going to be doing with the help of Rosie is I'm going to be taking this board out. I'm going to be squaring off here and squaring off here, running the wall flush with this so that this all just runs completely flush the whole way through as close as I can get it. And this one here the reason I've put it at this point, I'll be having the wall coming off here, is because then the stair stringer that's going to run on this side of the wall will match that one exactly. So I've got all of the timbers that I need up here. These are all six by twos. Now, I've, I've done it in six by two because I wanted a bit more depth in the wall. I want to be able to run services in here, like the showers, the pipes, um, the, base, you know, the, the basins over there, so I don't need to worry about that so much. But actually, maybe, you know, I could I could easily do it in 4x2. It, it really doesn't matter too much. Rather than doing this one in 6x2, this one will probably end up being 4x2. Give me a little bit extra in the room. This one will probably be 6x2. Mainly because... Well, I'm going to be doing a 6 Actually, you know what? I'm thinking as I'm speaking, I think a 4x2 wall here makes a lot more sense. Because all of my services are going to be in this wall here. This is going to be my false wall, which is going to be in 6x2. Because that gives me the depth that I need to hide the soil pipe and I can run all of the all of these pipes up in this wall here. So yeah, I need some four by twos. Right, I am picking up the next day. I know this is all one video, so I'm not gonna say welcome back or anything, but I am picking up the next day because all the timber arrived yesterday afternoon. They actually delivered it the same day. So those are all the timbers that I'm gonna be using. And what I'm gonna do is have a baseboard along here and along here. In theory, I don't need one because it's OSB here and, the, and that there, but it makes it easier to have something for the bottom edge of the plasterboard to catch on and kind of just set the plasterboard on the floor and then I can screw it in along the bottom. So it makes life easier for me. The other thing I've just looked at and noticed is obviously the board is gonna be this way and so it's knocking up here against this, which I'm gonna be using as my drain point for the uh, shower. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to notch out this little bit of 18 mil OSB, which will allow me to put a support piece up here, hard up against that, and then flush with the 18 mil. And then when I get my uh, baseboard here, I'm gonna notch out here to, so there's a bit of space and freedom and I think future Tom and Nick the plumber will thank me for that so that'll make life easier. The other thing I'm going to do very quickly is just spend some time measuring up and marking exactly where I need everything so I can run off here I can use my uh, spirit level my straight edge on the spirit level. See isn't that interesting this thing is perfectly straight but it looks curved in the video because of the lens. So occasionally when you guys tell me, oh, it's not plumb or it's not parallel, that it gives you a really good indication of, that's called aspheric aberration, which is something that happens with lenses. Anyway, I will measure off here, leaving space for the plasterboard and yeah, come through. I may even take this sheet of plasterboard off and measure straight off those studs and off this one here. And then I've got a nice straight line that I can, that I can run the whole way along here. And similarly with this one, I can run straight along this edge and go from there. So yeah, I'm gonna sort that now.
Right, you'll have seen what I was doing, marking the edge of the stud. The stud will lie here, like that, and here, like that. Then what I did is I measured a meter from the edge of the tread. Actually, I measured 97 centimeters because there is a bit of nosing on the end of the top tread, which takes it up to a meter. That is a regulation stipulation in building control. That's because building control actually says that a landing needs to be as wide and as long as the smallest width of the flight of stairs. And my stairs are nearly a meter wide. Don't ask me why. It is what it is and I'm not going to pretend to know better. So this is where the door is going to be and the door is going to open this way. And then over here, we will have the bathroom door that will open this way. So there's actually, you know, not a bad bit of space there. It's not massive, but it's not tiny. And I knew that that was going to be this, this case. So I've kind of planned the cabling to be around there in the middle. So we'll have a light. We'll have a light in the middle of that space. So now I can measure and mark. I'm going to cut out that little bit there fill in the block and then I'm good to go. I can measure and mark and, and I'm away. I'm off to the races. Guys, sorry about the time lapse. A friend of mine phoned me and it threw out the time lapse so it didn't happen. I measured these, cut them. You can see where I've put this block what I'm going to do is I'm just going to screw that in lots of space here so that's nice and easy and it's all flush in line with that and then this one here I also wrote radiator pipes under here so I know exactly where those are goes right up to the to the mark which is very good so I'm happy with that yeah it's all coming out okay so I am just now figuring out what I'm going to be doing about the doorway. And I know some of you hate this, some of you love this, but I have drawn another little plan. I'm going to quickly talk you through what I'm doing. So this is that one there. That one is this here with a little bit nibble cut out. Now, I'm obviously going to have plasterboard along here and here. So I need something for it to catch on at the end. So you'd, this is what you would typically do, by the way. I cannot quite do this, and I'll explain why in a second. You would normally have your four by two here. You'd then have like a little spacer block, something a little bit like that, just to give you a bit of depth. And then you'd have the other four by two on the end. And then you would have this piece here, like that. And that way you've got something for your plasterboard to catch on here. You've got something to attach your door lining to. And then this space here, there's some plasterboard, probably about that much is taken up for plasterboard. And then, you know, you've got your door, say, let's say your door lining, I know this is a bit oversized, but say your door lining was that sort of size, this would give you a nice space for your architrave and, you know, yeah, your architrave. I cannot do that. I have not got enough space, and that's on a 762 door. I haven't got enough space for this four by two, unfortunately. I am at the limit because I wanted this wall here to line up with that bit there so that the staircase was the same width. And staircases are not designed, the width of a staircase is not designated by the door that goes at the top of it. So I've built off here, I added this section on, I, I worked out the door length and then I actually added on this 3x8 here to pack out so that it's the same size as that. If I hadn't done that, it would have been perfect for this little setup here. Hey ho, not the end of the world. What, what it means is that I will, uh, I will have this same setup here. So the 4x2, the spacer block and the 4x2. And then I will have my door lining which is indicated by this, going straight onto here, like that, straight on there. Not ideal, also not the end of the world. It is what it is. So that's what I will do, and that will then give me enough space for a 35mm door lining, 
762 door, 35mm door lining, and then the same again on this side. I wouldn't really want to go for a smaller door, that's the other option, get a slightly smaller door, but 762 is what, the, what we've got everywhere else in the house. They look nice, they work well. If you've got wheelchair access and whatever else, I mean, good luck getting up the stairs, but it's, it's a good sized door for that. So that is the plan. By doing it on paper like this, it helps me, A, figure out how many timbers I need, what timbers I don't need, and it makes the whole process go much smoother. I can then work out on this piece of paper here, I can put the measurement in, divide it by 400 centers, and then work out how many timbers I need on top. So that's, that's my little helpful tip. Quick bit of maths later, 1385 divided by 400 is 3.5. So that gives me, you basically round up, you get four. So I'll have four in between here and the end. Plus I've got this one here, so that means I'm going to have five on this side. Same again on that side, one, two, three is almost dead on three, plus the extra one is four. So I know that I need nine studs just for this little run here. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to spend a little bit of time figuring out what's happening after this on this side because I then also have the doorway into the bathroom. Now I could perhaps offset that slightly. I could have a little, a little indent in the wall here and then come in. I need to figure that out. This bathroom is absolutely huge. A, as a bathroom, but B, as an ensuite for a guest room. So it might actually make sense to come in a bit and then I could have this as a slightly bigger shower area. I'm gonna speak with the wife, figure it out, and then I'll mark it on the floor and then I can figure out what's going on here. What we're gonna do is I'll build this wall here along a little bit further and we'll have the doorway there. I will then build a stud wall this way, like that. And then this will act as like a shower enclosure area here. We'll then have space for like a vanity unit type thing, basin, radiator, toilet. The toilet may move down a little bit, we're not sure yet. We'll see. The other thing that I, I don't know why I didn't think about this, but I bought 2.4 meter timbers, which I thought, oh yeah, 2.4, 2.4, that'll be fine. Stick it on the stud, like this, and it doesn't reach. So I need to put a second one on here so that when that is on there that can then reach because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put noggins there'll be noggins going across the ceiling here like this at 400 centers and I will attach the uh, the 4x2 the 4x2 will be attached to that bit of extra faff but it is what it is not the end of the world it also actually gives me the opportunity to layer up this so I can use a slightly shorter piece here. I can then extend the, this timber and then I can layer it up like that so it overlaps the joint. Stronger anyway. Much like I did in the headlap when I built these external walls. I did an overlap on the double header that I put in place. If you haven't seen that, I'll post a link to that up here. Right, I'm going to crack on. I'm not going to time lapse this because it's going to be gnarly and boring and I think everyone's getting bored of time lapses. So I will show you what I've done in a second. A little update on my progress. Nothing down here has changed, but up here I have some noggins here and that is to catch the stud that'll go on here. And it works almost perfectly. So I put that stud down there and I leave it up and that is ever so slightly too long so I can shave a nibble off that one and then shoot it into place and then I can line up all the rest of them. On this side what I did is through this way I screwed a 4x2 here. The reason I did that rather than doing the same thing here is because now when I place this stud up on here and again it's a little bit tight but that's fine but when it is up there and plumb like that, I have a lip for my plasterboard to catch, same as it will on those ones. Over here, of course, it can just run through. So that's awesome. Pleased with that. Very pleased indeed. So that's going to save me a lot of time and hassle and effort and all the rest of it, having that in place. So I'm just going to go and grab some lunch now 
after lunch, I can nibble those down and then shoot them in and the stud walls are pretty much done. So that is the first stud wall done. You can see what I mean by having these spacer blocks here, like that. Just offers just a bit of space when I have my door lining here. It would normally be a 4x2, but as we know, we can't in this instance because the doorway is not quite wide enough because of the stairs. When I have this the thinner door lining, give something for the plasterboard to butt up to here. If I just had it there, the door lining wouldn't have something as sturdy to fix to, and there would, I'd have to put another stud in anyway. So by doing it like this, it just makes life a little bit easier. So that's that. It is super, super sturdy, this wall. Very, very solid. I'm gonna put a row of noggins in across, just like that. I'm only gonna do one row. Uh, that's, that's fine for this wall. It's just an internal stud. And then I'm gonna move on to this one here. I'll probably put you on a time lapse for this one so you can see it because uh, I appreciate you didn't see this one. Once I've done that, I then need to create a little wall, a little stud here, coming across there like that. This is really starting to come together now. Second stud is up. Noggins are in. This is nice and even across that line here. That'll be the threshold. Super sturdy. Very, very solid wall. The other thing I was really careful to check, keep checking was that this was nice and tight the whole way along. So that's going to be a really easy wall to put plasterboard up on. It's just a hair of a gap there, but that's actually due to a bend in the timber rather than anything else. You see a slight gap there in the timber and it's tight up the top there, tight down at the bottom there. It's a slight bow. That's fine. It's not, it's not a problem. So that's going to be really, really nice. Did the same on this side. So now what I'm going to do is just spend a little bit of time thinking and getting everything ready. This is pretty much done now. What I need to do is actually put an additional stud just on the end here, up to there, because the door is going to be on here and I want the stud, you know, it's going to be stud, door lining, and then stud, door lining. So that's going to be a normal, a normal uh, doorway 
as per this, so there'll be a stud, then the door lining on this side here, which is great, and that will be on the same on that side as well. So what I'll do is I'll put the stud, the stud is going to run, the stud will run up this way, right on the edge of that timber there, nice and flush, all the way up to the ceiling. So I'm going to have to put one more noggin up there, that's no problem, all the way up, and then I can run the door lining down there. What I can also then do is bring this wall out this way, so that we've got the shower enclosure kind of filled in there. I'm going to crack on with that now. day is going really quite well actually but I did make a slight mistake which I'm gonna fess up to so that you guys can learn from my mistakes I have not accounted for my header here which is a bit of an oversight and a bit of an error it's not the end of the world it really it really isn't I can just screw a 2x4 across here as the header it's, it, it really is not the end of the world. What I might do is put a little block in here so that I and, and another one on this side at the point of the header so that I've got something to fix into. Just It just kind of makes life easier. Now, this 18mm flooring here, I'm going to be putting 22mm on top and then this will be carpeted, so another kind of probably 12 to 15mm for underlay and carpet. So, when I'm working out my door height, so the height that I need to put the header at, you take your door height, which is your 1981. If that's the height of your door, that's the height of my door. So 1981 plus the 22 mil of thickness of the chipboard flooring, that gives 203. So I've rounded that up to 205. 15 mil of carpet equals 220. Plus I'm gonna have probably 30 mil of door lining. So that then comes out to 2050. That is the height that I need to put this stud at from that floor there. So that's my situation. Yours may be different. You may not have carpet. You might have luxury vinyl tile. You may have gone straight to this 22 mil chipboard on top of your studs. The reason that I've done this is because it then helped match the height of the pre-made staircase, which is there. So. Uh, that just worked out a little bit easier and the, and the treads are 22 mil so I'll leave a space at the top tread and then the floor will just run up to it nice and smooth but those are the sorts of things that you need to think about when you are doing your doors what I'm going to do now is cut two of these uh, 4x2s down to 2050 two of them, one for this side one for that side then I'll measure flush across here using my straight edge to make sure that it lines up nicely using that over there to make sure it's nice and level and then by doing that on here I then have somewhere for the plasterboard to run the whole way across and then the door lining will go up and over here
And that is pretty much it. Just need to put this header across still. I've got a door frame there, which is nice. And it's nice and flush. Runs nice and straight the whole way across. Because I used this spirit level as a straight edge to catch that. That's nice and solid there. Also, this edge here will catch the plasterboard between here and here the plasterboard will catch. So that's fine. I can pack it, pack this with insulation. That's no problem. The other option I could do, I'm going to use a 108 mil lining that will sit in here. So there'll be enough space for it to catch on this side and on this side and run the whole way across. So that's fine. Door lining will go up and around here. So we'll just need to plasterboard across this top bit. So the door lining will go up inside here and then down. And there's plenty of space for a 762 door in there. Which is great. It's really good. Come in, so you step into the bathroom and then the shower will be in here, in this space. So it works, it works really well. I'm very, very pleased with it. The other thing that we're going to do because I can run the pipes, what we will do is we will have the shower, thermostatic shower valve there, and the head will be up there. And then what I'll probably do is put a nook here. So I'll frame that out. I'll figure out exactly where I want it and put a nook in there that will tile and waterproof so that we can, you know, put our uh, shampoo and conditioner and things like that on that all there. It won't be huge, but it'll it'll work fine. So yeah, it's it, it is coming together. Again, I know this looks scruffy, but it doesn't need to look great. It just needs to hide soil pipes and things like that. So I'm going to call it there for the day. This is what I love about carpentry. This room was completely blank when I started the day. It's just one big space. Now it's two rooms, a hallway, two doorways shower enclosure, space for plasterboard to go, all in the space of a few hours. So I'm really, really happy with this. Hope you have found this helpful uh, and enjoyable as well. I hope you find it enjoyable watching and hopefully learning some bits. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments. If you fancy giving it a like and a share, that'd be really helpful. And I will see you on the next video.